Today on the We Invested podcast, we have Jordan Weaver, and she is the founder and CEO of Forefront. Jordan, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for joining, man. I know before we started recording, I was just letting you know um, how much of a fan I am of your work and everything that you've been creating. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's definitely an honor to really be able to have people to believe in the vision and see the vision. So that's all I could ever ask for. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So before we get started, would you mind letting the people know how they can find you on social media and the internet? Yeah, so um, you can find Forefront on all social media platforms, Forefront, A-T-L, F-O-R-E, F-R-O-N-T, A-T-L. Um, you can also find me on social media platforms, Jordan the Goat, J-O-R-D-Y-N-D-A-G-O-A-T. I think there might be an, an underscore or two somewhere, but yeah, <laughs> you'll sure. find me. All right, and, and we'll be sure to put the links up in everywhere so they can cool. find you easily. But um, yeah, man, so let's just start from the beginning and take it from the top and talk a little bit about, you know, where you're from and where you grew up. Yeah, so I was actually born in Indianapolis, Indiana, um, but I call Charlotte, North Carolina home and grew up there most of my life. And, um, you know, my parents were entrepreneurs. My dad actually started a church and they had a nonprofit. And um, so really growing up, I saw my parents kind of building their own and never really saw them working like a nine to five too often, um, you know, once I started to grow up. And um, I guess I kind of really instilled a lot of entrepreneurship in me, um, wanting to just have and be able to build the life that I want. Um, so I think that was the main thing that kind of sparked me to wanting to get into entrepreneurship. When I was a kid, we used to do like lemonade stands and we used to do like um, pet sitting and cat sitting and all that kind of stuff and post flyers around the neighborhood. So I guess that hustle has always kind of been instilled in me. Um, it wasn't really until I got to college when I really decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Like that was my career that I wanted. Um, and it really became one of those things. I just wanted to go against the grain, like going to college. You know, everybody would ask me, what do I want to be or where do I want to work? And I'm just like, uh, nowhere, like nowhere, no place really excites me. Um, so I wanted to start my own company and uh, I guess the vision really came. I actually went to an HBCU, North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina. And um, that's really where my passion for um, supporting the black community, um, helping us to build and accumulate more wealth, um, very ironically going to school five minutes from the Durham Black Wall Street. I definitely see that it's kind of a divine mission that I'm on to really kind of rebuild that in a sense. Um, so there, that's really where I developed the idea of Forefront. It was actually not called Forefront at that point in time. It's been an evolving vision and idea for the past five years, but um, I just wanted to create a platform to make it easier to support and discover Black-owned businesses. I feel like supporting Black businesses is the, the core of Black wealth in our community. So I wanted to create something just to make it easier to find them and just kind of make it more of a norm. Um, but fast forward to now, um, wanted to go back to school just to kind of learn more about entrepreneurship, build my network and things like that. So I recently just got my master's last year in innovation entrepreneurship from UC Irvine. And that really instilled a lot of just foundation of entrepreneurship. I mean, we can get the basic fundamentals, but really, um, starting a new innovative company, it takes a lot of different steps. And that's what laid that foundation and allowed me to really bring forefront into the, the picture and make it a lot more innovative and tech focused um, where it is now. No, that's incredible, man. And I, I think you said something that's really amazing. Um, you know, you mentioned that you were on a divine mission mm -hmm. and, you know, with just the conviction that you speak with and, you know, just the, the understanding them, and it's like you already know what you need. You knew that you needed to go to school to get an MBA, to get a deeper understanding of, um, you know, how to be an entrepreneur, how to grow a business from scratch. So, I mean, to know it, to know something and then to actually execute it and do it, it takes a different kind of person. You know, it's a special person. So, I mean, just what gives you that drive? What gives you that motivation to just have a vision and go attack it? so like I said it's divine it's definitely something I believe is a gift from God it's not something that I take credit for like I definitely believe um I remember being in my dorm room going through one of the worst times the lowest points of my life and you know that's really when I developed my relationship with God and 
when I believe he was able to show me this vision and this plan for my life. And I'm like, I actually have a weird ideology that kind of keeps me motivated. And I believe that like, we all have our own purpose in life and, you know, we're all here for a reason. And I feel like if I'm not walking in a purpose God has for me, there's no reason for me to be here. Um, so take it how you want to. So like that kind of just motivates me to just make sure I'm always working towards my my life's mission, my purpose in life. Because if not, then I have no purpose here. And you know, God can do what He wants with me. But um, that is one of my motivations. But also, um, I just find a lot of fulfillment and just like pushing myself forward and doing things that I never thought I could do, or just like testing my limits. I'm uh, have very strong faith and you know really believe in the idea of manifestation and something like that really does like intrigue me. So being able to put out in a universe that I believe Forefront will be a billion dollar company, like and saying that with conviction and like actually going out and putting the work. So one day I can prove myself right. So that's really where I find a lot of like motivation um, within my goals. I, I tend to set really high goals and, you know, it might take me some years to get there, but, you know, I have a lot of faith in God and, you know, I'm belief in myself that I can make that happen. That's incredible, man. I mean, the- I want to talk more and learn more about this billion dollar company that you're creating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I want to ask is what is Forefront? Yeah. So Forefront is a social shopping platform where you can discover a shop and also get paid to support black owned businesses. So we're pretty much a social first marketplace immediately after where we're wanting to create a different social shopping experience to really um, normalize and, you know, just make it easier and convenient to support black owned businesses and really just kind of change the status quo on how we think about and, you know, um, support these brands. So we're forefront, um, we're taking a different approach. Um, we really want there to be a new experience with supporting businesses. And what that means is bringing your friends, bringing your friends along your shopping journey and allowing them to see what brands you're supporting, um, but one thing I think Forefront is doing that's very unique is just really giving brands and influencers a new opportunity to really scale and grow and earn revenue online. I know there's so much backlash with TikTok and Instagram right now, how they're, you know, suppressing content and things like that, shadow banning, and that's more particularly with Black creators and Black businesses. And um, of course, that's causing them to miss out on so much money. And I think there is definitely an opportunity to merge the social media experience with shopping to give people an opportunity to really connect with their brands. So through our platform, brands are able to like be able to share updates with their top supporters, such as, you know, their restocks and, you know, their, um, their new releases and just, you know, promotions and things like that. But also influencers are able to come on our platform and actually get paid to actually support these brands. So it's not like, hey, we're sending you free products from black brands and you're promoting them. It's an opportunity for them to support them, maybe at a discounted price, but still be able to, you know, push these products authentically to their audience, whether it be through TikTok and social media or even just through our platform and being able to bring more traction and recognition to these brands and also get paid for it. That's incredible. I mean, you know, how did you get started in this industry? How did you kind of uh, birth this idea? So really started at Central. Um, I remember being a sophomore in college and I was working at P.F. Chang's. And I remember just thinking like, why are there no um, black owned businesses that I know about that are, you know, at this caliber. And that's where I really de- developed the idea of like a marketplace for black brands um, to make it easier to find. And to my knowledge, there wasn't really something that existed back then. Of course, once I got more into the industry and did more market research, there were other platforms um, out there, but they weren't necessarily at the forefront. They weren't necessarily targeting people um, that I believe that forefront can target or in a way that forefront wants to target them. Um, really targeting millennials and Gen Zers, ones who desire connection and that digital um, presence. So um, I decided I wanted to really take a new approach. I didn't want it to just be a marketplace. I wanted it to be a true experience, something that can really you know, intrigue people to want to support Black-owned businesses. Um, You know, there's so much innovation, so many different spots to make it easier for us to order food online and do so many different things right at the fingertips. Um, So I wanted to make sure that Forefront was in a position to do that in a way that is um, convenient and um, 
just memorable, I guess, to our to our audience. So that's really what led me to start Forefront and, you know, really just want to make it something bigger. Um, so that's kind of what started Forefront. But also, so I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, my fault. I was going to say, um, also, I know you asked about like the foundation. So there's a lot of different programs I was able to do. Of course, going and get my master's that really supported um, everything that I'm doing right now because it allowed me to just understand it. Starting a business is not just writing a business plan and, you know, getting the materials and getting to it. There's so much foundation that you really need to implement, especially um, when you're creating a startup. I, I believe a startup is something that is not being done before. You're creating something from scratch, from the ground. So there's a lot of validation that has to come into play. So that was a lot of things, just talking to customers, you know, um, and testing it out, things like that. So that's really, you know, that kind of foundation. Man, so, I mean, it really sounds like Forefront is just as much of a tech company as it is like a social platform slash marketplace. You know, it sounds yeah. like you're really um, being considerate of that user experience, of that customer experience. And and like you said, man, just really bringing forth that convenience for both sides of the of the spectrum, the, the brands, as well as the consumers. Exactly. We're definitely a tech, a tech driven, a tech focused company. Um, and I, of course, of course, technology is the future of technology is the present now it's taken over. So I think, you know, really being able to utilize technology, um, to benefit these brands, whether it's using AI, whether it's using social commerce and, um, you know, live shopping, that's some of the future things that I see within Forefront, like really being able to show our people that we can be just as innovative as the Instagrams and the TikToks. Um, so that's really my goal with Forefront, just to show our people that we can also be the CEOs of these powerful tech companies that are really making a change for not even just our community, but, you know, across the world. So, I mean, you know, just listening to your story, I could tell that you know, entrepreneurship and business is something that you've always been interested in, you know, from having a lemonade stand early on. Uh, but it's tech and technology and um, applications and things of that nature. Is that something you've also always been interested in? Um, not until I really got exposed to it. Um, like, I've always been an innovator. Like, I, since I can remember, the ideas that I thought about were very tech-driven and tech-focused. I just didn't really have a tech background. But understanding that, you know, looking at these big major corporations and seeing what they incorporate, the Googles, the Apples, um, just everybody, Microsoft, they're tech-driven companies. And, you know, even Netflix, you know, how they took Blockbuster out, like they brought technology to, to the forefront. And I believe that that's, that's the way to go. If we want to, you know, build billion dollar co corporations, we have to be innovative. We have to, you know, bring technology, um, you know, involved. So, I mean, something that sounds really interesting to me, and I'm sure that sounds interesting to everybody else who hears it and who hears about it, is that the fact that brands, both brands and influencers can get paid using this platform. So, I mean, I just want to kind of learn more, a little, a little bit more about, I guess, the business model um, behind that or how both sides or both parties can go about kind of earning that additional revenue stream by using Forefront. Yeah, so Forefront is essentially a triple-sided marketplace um, where we're going to be able to charge brands and users and the influencers a subscription. Um, of course, shoppers, they're um, optional. They don't have to pay a subscription, but for brands, in order to market on our platform and to be able to sell their products to our marketplace, there's you know a small subscription. And then as far as influencers, they'll pay the same thing, but they'll actually get access to discounted products and you know access to their very own um, influencer affiliate link. So very similar to like, you know, Amazon affiliate link, how Amazon pays influencers to promote products and things like that, or they don't pay them, they give them a commission. And that's essentially what Forefront will do. So let's say um, your influencer or even use your podcast as an opportunity, because we definitely want to um, incorporate podcasters and things like that into that influencer program, where you're able to come on Forefront, let's say you see, you know, maybe five to 10 dope black brands that you that you actually purchase, you you um, really support and you want to promote them on your podcast. 
So you can share our, the, your profile link or your affiliate link um, through your profile or through your podcast, excuse me. And whoever goes to it, they're able to go shop through your profile link and whoever makes a purchase, you'll earn a commission. So that's really how it works. Very similar to any other affiliate program, but we're really focusing on Black brands and um, really just giving them opportunity to leverage influencers that they may not have access to. A lot of small businesses that we're focusing on, they have not had the opportunity to access influencers because of how much it costs. But that's why we were taking a different approach because with how social media is today, um, you know, somebody can have 500,000 followers and they'll get paid $2,000 to promote a product that they've never tried, you know, and it's just very inauthentic and it's kind of misleading to the customer, somebody who's, you know, truly entrusting in this influencer, you know, we, we follow their lifestyles, we follow, we love what they're doing, they promote a product, I'm going to go try it, let alone, but they haven't even, you know, tried it themselves. So we want to kind of change that. We really want our influencers on our, on our platform to actually support and uplift and really love the products that they're promoting. So that's why there is, you know, um, an opportunity for them to purchase the products at a discounted rate for them to be able to promote and really just make it authentic. Um, that's the main way we want to give them honest and authentic feedback when they're promoting and reviewing these brands because that's what they deserve. I mean, and I just think it's it's amazing, you know, what you're doing by by getting everyone kind of involved, you know, it just drives that engagement. It drives the the curiosity and, and um, you know, just people wanting to be on your platform and wanting to learn more about it. Just not even necessarily to just earn money, but to go and shop and to be able to browse these different black owned products and brands. I mean, which kind of leads me to my next point or my next question. I mean, I think it's a genius business decision. For your for you and your company to focus on beauty and cosmetic products first so i mean you know what was your vision behind that decision so of course grand scheme of things overall vision i want forefront to be a place where you can go to find all things black on just like you go to amazon to pretty much find everything and anything I want people to be able to come to Forefront to find anything as far as cosmetics, as far as home goods, as far as luxury items, jewelry, health and wellness. I want us, I want us to be the go-to platform for that. But understanding how scalability works and how scaling a, you know, a tech company works, I want to be able to start small, really find that validation um, and just find a model that works. So we might, um, when we launch our pilot, we might recognize that when people don't care about cosmetics or they don't care about black on like we'll just be able to learn so much that we can then you know incorporate later on but overall it was just um understanding how much who we're targeting and understanding primarily the users on our platform will be black consumers um not limiting it to just black consumers but we know that um that's primarily who we want to target and looking at how much we spend of course we all know we have one point i think it's six trillion dollar buying power at this point and 90% of that goes to cosmetics, beauty, and things like that. So I really want to be able to change that where people can find Black-owned products that are just as good, probably even better because they're made from people like us who understand our skin. So that's really the goal, just starting off with that and showing people that if you can find, you know, skincare as good as, I don't even want to say brands, but if you can find skincare as good as your name brands that are in your 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 bathroom closet right now um that are black owned you can find anything black owned you know there's so many black owned luxury handbags now so many um black owned jewelry brands shoe brands you can find anything black owned so i want forefront to be able to kind of show people what we're most comfortable with um and what we spend the most money with to show them that we can find these products just as good in quality that are black owned and then kind of expand and show them other things i mean you're very thoughtful with your approach um mm -hmm. and just you know, understanding that, you know, starting out with the niche and in, in that kind of specialized field or that specialized market, then understanding your target audience and also, um, you know, not being afraid to test the market, not being afraid to try, you know, having that curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, is that, are, are these traits that you've always had just constantly being curious and, and uh, basically, having a level of fearlessness to to try anything no not really because when I first started the idea of forefront or even back in college with the black market company I didn't understand that like just starting off small and 
things like that. I actually, when I was getting my master's, they kept telling me that. And it was something very hard for me to hear. Like, no, I don't want to just start small. I don't want to just be another marketplace that only focuses on cosmetics. But it has made the most sense. But also just being able to be a student and listen to what people are saying. It's not always to, you know, set your business back, but it's really for, you know, a greater reward. Thinking about how Amazon started. They started off selling books. Now they sell everything you can even imagine. So um, it's just kind of really just, thinking big I guess what they say start with the end of mind or begin with the end of mind like we can't start with everything you know um but no it definitely has not something it's not been something that I've always had um however I, I did learn um I guess in college or maybe in high school my um what do they call it my personality strengths and I learned that I'm very strategic like that's one of my top strengths also innovative and some other things, but those are two that kind of stood out. I think futuristic was another one. So those are th three things that kind of brought me a lot of validation and confirmation. I went, cause that was like in the middle of my entrepreneurial journey. I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Why I'm this way, why I'm always thinking about problems and solutions and things like that. So I guess it's kind of always been there but it's been developed. I mean, I think something very significant and special, um, you know, just about what you've done and your character is that some people will, you know, like you mentioned, you, you attained your MBA. So some people will just go to school and study how to do things. Or some people will just go out and try business and learn from trial and error. But it's like you were able to combine both of those ideas or, or both of those uh, tactics and, and create something extremely successful. So, I mean, what do you think the benefits are from going to school and you know, real life trial and error, really running a business and, and seeing what it's all about and getting your hands dirty? Um, so I always say you definitely don't need to go to school to start a business. For me and my path, it's something that worked out. I was able to see the benefits of going to an HBC, going to college and understanding that the biggest thing you're able to walk away with is opportunity and a network. It's not always the, the uh, degree or the job or the income. It's sometimes just being able to maximize opportunities. And that was something that I believe I did in undergrad um, with starting my businesses and my ideas and just kind of putting myself around those people that can kind of put me in opportunities and, you know, put my names in rooms and in opportunities and things like that. So being able to understand that and I decided to go get my master's and it actually wasn't an MBA. Um, so it was like, it's not a, a popular program, but it's a master's in innovation entrepreneurship. So the beauty about that is they actually teach you how to really jumpstart an idea, take your idea from idea to conception to launch and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that was great because I got my undergrad degree in fashion. I also had a minor in business, but I did not feel like I knew business at all. Um, and let alone how to actually start a business. One thing to be able to run and manage a business, but actually launching from the ground up. And so that's what I wanted to learn, but also understanding how big California is um, in the innovation space and in the tech space, even though Irvine is far from Silicon Valley, um, there's so many amazing people that know a lot about innovation and technology. So I wanted to be able to build my network out there um, and just learn as much as I can. But I definitely believe it takes it, you know, both is definitely beneficial. Um, I'm not going to say that if you didn't go to college or if you don't go to college, you can't be a successful entrepreneur because there are people who are doing it. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just being able to, um, you know, really just be able to take advantage of opportunities and build networks. Um, I know a lot of the opportunities and things I was able to do, um, came directly from me going to college and being in these rooms. Um, so it's really your own path. Just figure it out. I think that's the main thing about entrepreneurship. You're going to take what you have and figure it out versus, you know, focus on what you don't have. I don't have a degree. I don't have this, that, and the third, just figure it out. So that's the main thing I would say. So what have been some of the most successful methods that you've used to get your company uh, exposure and, and kind of grow the brand? Honestly, I'm surprisingly like very, just being, very, being very organic with my approach, like on social media, um, we haven't even bought ads or things like that, or like, you know, really started honing in on our marketing just yet. I don't know, you know, it's only beginning and it's something I know we need to do, but a lot of the traction that we've been able to, um, gain has really just been from being organic and just sharing our story, sharing 
the mission behind it and sharing our goal. Um, I remember um, recently we launched like the influencer program where we promoted that on the platform or on our social media. And we got a lot of traction and interest from that. So it's kind of just like being able to understand what people want and need. People are on Instagram right now and they are wanting to monetize their audience, but they don't know how. Um, so for giving an opportunity to, you know, to be able to do it and also make an impact on businesses in their community. Um, it's like just being able to meet people where they are. And I think that's the main thing. Um, what marketing is not necessarily buying all these ads, but giving people what they want and understanding your customer and being able to like articulate who you are, what your business is and what you can do for them and, um, how it can benefit them. So that has been like the main approach. Um, and definitely with the influencer program, the beauty about that is these influencers are not just ambassadors essentially for the brands, but they're also ambassadors for Forefront. So it's kind of like a win, win, win. You know, they're bringing brands more sales, they're getting paid and also Forefront is being able to build our platform through the influencers. So I definitely said the influencers are our bread and butter and, you know, definitely plan on tapping into some other forms of marketing soon. Uh, but yeah, just social media. It has its challenges, but it's also, you know, a blessing to be able to reach people in your own creative ways. Man, I mean, I think you just dropped a lot of jewels right there in, in your response. I mean, just by saying, you know, some of the most effective ways have just been through giving the audience what they want, what they desire, and then also being able to effectively communicate and articulate your vision so people can understand what it is that you're doing and what you're trying to create so mm -hmm. I mean that'll encourage the people to get behind you even more so I mean it's just like the understanding that you have for the business and how to grow it and how to execute it I mean it's like uh it's incredible honestly thank you yeah thank for you. sure I mean and you know one thing you mentioned that you've always been innovative I mean and it's it's easy to see that so I, you know I want to ask how has your creativity benefited you while building this company? And like, how creative has this process been for you? It's definitely been an ongoing creative process. Um, there was actually a time, me being an innovator and just an ideator and I'm always having ideas. And for a minute, I, I, I almost got frustrated with myself because I feel like, okay, I have all these ideas. I keep changing this thing. I don't know what I want to do just yet. And it was something that kind of took me a long time to figure out exactly what I wanted to do and what Forefront really will become. And that was something that I couldn't understand. I'm like, why is it taking me so long like, to actually get started? But I had to realize that, like I said, if I want Forefront to be a billion dollar company, I might, it's not going to be an overnight thing. Um, so now I'm really learning to kind of fall in love with that process and understanding that Every small idea, even if it's something only for the moment, like it's something that's kind of bringing me closer to like the full vision of what Forefront will be. So I just had to fall in love with the process. Sometimes being a creator, you know, um, or an innovator, like that is something that can keep you stagnant. Just, you know, okay, I got another, I have another idea, excuse me, or another idea. And it's just like, you have to really just start, you know what I'm saying? You have an idea, okay, let's just, let's get started and see what's next, you know? So just focus on where you are um, and implementing, executing where you are right now, the idea that you have right now and everything else is gonna come along. Um, but yeah, being creative, um, I think that's definitely a strong point. That's something I'm realizing that a lot of people don't really have. Um, even, you know, when we think about like a startup team, you will have, the founder or the CEO, you'll have the CTO, the CMO, the CTO, sometimes they're the founders of the company and they're not that creative. They have an idea, they have a problem, they know how to code. Um, they might not be able to be the one who's thinking about all these marketing campaigns or um, social media ads and things like that. So, I mean, I do believe that being a founder that has, you know, creative ideas can definitely um, be beneficial in the future. Um, so. I love it. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse sometimes, but I definitely love it. I mean, in, in like you just mentioned, talk, talking about a team and just, you know, those different pieces to that team. So, I mean, the next question I want to ask is, what would you say is the importance of having a team and how did you focus on building yours? I would say the biggest thing is being able to find people who truly believe in your vision and not just here for the short run, but for the long run. Um, so it's really important to be able to find like-minded individuals who have the same vision, have the same hustle, 
and are willing to, you know, get behind what you're doing just as if it's their own. And that's something that's really important to me. Um, I definitely am continuing to build a team. So right now we have two individuals, Mike, uh, you know, Mike, he is actually helping us with like our, he's our head of community. So he's helping us really build and establish the brand's um, identity with other brands and um, influencers. So we're really building that community up. And we also have another girl, Desiree, who's supporting us with social media and is helping us to build our brand through social media. Um, and it's crazy how those um, those two people came onto the team. And it really was a post that I did, really just simpl um, simply just explaining my vision behind Forefront and like the story behind Forefront. Something small that I put in a tweet and I got some retweets and some likes. I'm like, okay, let me post it on Instagram. And, um, you know, the girl Desiree reached out. She just said, hey, are you looking to, you know, expand your team? And I think Mike, I actually did his podcast and he heard the vision. He's like, wow, that's something I want to get behind. So I know a lot of times as an entrepreneur, especially when we have a new idea, like we get scared to tell people, like we feel like somebody's going to take our idea. I mean, even if they do, they're not going to do it like you. But I think just being able to, position yourself telling what you're doing and what you need help with people will be people the right people will be able to hear that and want to offer you help and support so I think just being able to share your idea you never know who's listening or who wants to help and support I mean and how does it feel like I mean what what emotions do you go through when when somebody like reads a tweet or, or hears you talk um, and, and communicate your vision and ideas and they say like hey this is something I want to be a part of this is something that I want to get behind like what is that feeling like for you I mean, it's very encouraging um I've always known like the capacity of like the impact Forefront can have um and for for a while I did struggle with the vision or even sometimes people understood the vision from the get-go but it was hard for me to articulate it fully the vision that I had in my head so being able to like start to explain that more and have people even just support it from, you know, even the simplified version, I'm like, wow, um, it's really encouraging is being able to see um, people just support you in general, um, whether it's you sharing it with friends or, you know, inviting people onto your, or being invited on people's podcasts. I think that's something that could really, um, I think that's something that could really, you know, keep fire under your belt to really continue to to go push forward you know even if it's something that I don't always feel up to doing waking up and working on my company um I believe that you know it's not just for me anymore I mean forefront was never just for me it's for my community so you know I, I believe that if I don't pursue it I'm letting people down so if people see the vision it's just like okay just keep working towards it they believe in you they're going to support you just launch it and continue to grow it. So it's very encouraging to say the least. So, I mean, what would you say are some of the roadblocks or the lessons that you had to learn early on while um, starting and creating Forefront? Roadblocks? Um, rejection, that's a big one. So I applied to a lot of grants and programs um, and things like that just to kind of position me to better grow and learn how to build forefront. So that's something that I'm learning too. Like there's just a lot of rejection and I had to like deal with it and, you know, fall in love with it and use that as fuel and motivation to continue to grow and, you know, um, essentially prove myself right. I don't like to say prove people wrong because you don't always wanna make what you're doing um, something just to prove to other people, you know what I'm saying? Cause that can easily, get in the way of your mission and your vision behind it so for me that has been one that has been not the easiest to do but like the more I kind of get rejected from different things I'm like you know what bet like I'm gonna keep doing it that's not gonna stop me and yeah so rejection is definitely one um also just like not having all the right you know all the right pieces that you think. So with Forefront being a tech company, me not having a tech background, that's one of my biggest roadblocks right now. Um, of course, being an entrepreneur and being just that strategic person, I'm always gonna find a way. So we were able to build our MVP on a no code platform. And for anybody who doesn't know, an MVP is like a minimal viable product. So it's like something you're able to create, you know, very quickly, very inexpensively to be able to go and validate your idea. So that's kind of where Forefront is now. And that's allowing us to um, 
you know, validated. And we've been showing people, showing our, our customers, our influencers and brands, and they're loving it. So um, that has been a roadblock as well, but just being able to find ideas and, you know, strategies around those things. So until you get to that point where you have that CCO that can build out your app, you still have what you need. How do you define success as an entrepreneur, CEO, and a founder? I define success as really just doing everything you're called to do. Um, so success to you might look completely different to than success for me. You know, we're all on different missions. Um, so I believe for me, success is just doing everything that I know um, God has essentially called me to do and I'm doing it to my fullest you know, extent. I also believe success is really just doing everything that I put my mind to. So I'm putting my mind to um, becoming a billion dollar company. It's just making forefront a billion dollar company and just making it that. And it's just being able to just prove myself right and just doing what makes me happy in the process. And I think that's really important is happiness in general, because I can build forefront into a billion dollar company and be depressed and just miserable. And I don't want that. So I want to be able to continue to make sure everything I'm doing is purpose-driven. Because I think if you're walking your purpose, you're always going to be able to um, find joy and happiness. And that's my ultimate goal. That's definitely first. Uh, I don't want to do anything or it's not worth it at that point. If I'm doing all this, I'm not happy. I'm not living the life that I want. So that's something that I'm actually learning right now in the process of being an entrepreneur is like just being able to enjoy the process. And that means sometimes on Saturdays, putting down a laptop and going to hang out. I'll go to a day party. And I, that's not something I've always been good at, but it's okay to go out and have fun. I know with this hustle culture, people feel like no days off. And I, I get it. I respect it. But again, when you know what you're doing is divine, there's nothing that's going to throw you off. Of course, stay focused and do what you need to do, but have fun. Um, I'm a strong believer in... Um, dang, what's the law? I about forgot. <laughs> um, the law of... Um, what is it? Essentially, I'll just explain it. The law is pretty much you're just um, detached. I think it's a lot of detachment, just detaching yourself from things. If I already know what I'm called to do is going to happen, I don't have to sit and just like, oh my God, I got to get this done. Like, I'll get it done. I'll stay focused and go have fun. I'll go out, have some drinks with some friends. I'll go out and, you know, watch Netflix, whatever I need to do just to center myself and then get back to work. So. The law of detachment, that's real. <laughs> that's a fact. Now it's about finding that balance for sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, how would you like for people to remember you and your company? Honestly, I'm glad you asked this. Um, I definitely want people to remember just myself as a founder and CEO. This is a, a woman who has strong faith, like a woman that really built this off of faith. It wasn't you know, something I just came up with, like I said, um, I believe, you know, I give all glory and credit to God. And I want to be able to show that, I guess, in my legacy, like you can do all things you put your mind to, but all things through Christ. And that's my biggest thing. Um, just being able to show people what I was able to do and, you know, fulfill my dreams, my desires, um, or essentially God's desires, um, really from just following Christ. So that is my biggest thing. Definitely woman of God. So I like to Put that out there but that's my biggest thing and just i went after everything that i said i would so that's my biggest thing too what does the future of forefront look like to you i think i already said it we're gonna be a billion dollar company um i see forefront really just changing the landscape of commerce social commerce not even just for the black community but i mean what we are planning to do i'm seeing so much that has not been done already so i want forefront to really be um, a game changer for just our community as a whole, showing each other that we can support one another. Um, we can support black owned businesses. We can even have a focus. There's so much doubt in what I'm doing from even black investors that, you know, don't really believe in what I'm doing because they think supporting black owned businesses is not a big enough market or focusing on black consumers is not a big enough market. Do you not know we have the largest buying power? You know what I'm saying? Focus on black consumers in itself. It's a $300 billion opportunity. So that, that, that's what I see. I see Forefront really being able to take full, um, full ownership of Black consumers, you know, being able to change our mindset and our buying decisions to really see the value 
in the quality of our businesses. So I see Forefront really kind of changing the landscape of how people shop, not just Black consumers. You know, I want anybody, just how we support any and everybody, I want any and everybody to be able to come on Forefront and shop. Um, as I mentioned, I see live shopping in the picture. I definitely want to incorporate a lot of technology. So like AI, live shopping and like shoppable content, things like that, that are really, you know, kind of tapping into online shopping. So that's really um, the future. I definitely see Forefront. Um, ideally, my goal is to like take us public and like allow people to be able to purchase shares and things like that. And that's another way that we're building wealth for our community. Ideally, I want Black people, our people to be able to buy shares as well. Um, and as Forefront goes up, we all go up. So that's my goal. That's incredible, man. Jordan, thank you so much for your time today, man. You've been dropping jewels and just getting the chance to pick your brain and hear how you think and, and to see how you operate is, I mean, it's really uh, inspirational, man. But before I let you go, um, you know, at the end of every podcast, we like to play a rapid fire question game where I ask you three questions. So if you're willing to play, I'll go ahead and get started. Yes, that's exciting. <laughs> okay. So question number one, where is your favorite place to travel? My favorite place is Jamaica. I love Jamaica. Um, I've only been once, so I just felt so at home. Um, so it's one of my favorite places, but also Cali. We spoke about this earlier. I'll say that's probably my second favorite. Cali is just a beautiful space, um, place, beautiful people, beautiful scenery, um, just like Jamaica. So those two are my favorites. Question number two, what song represents your life the most? <laughs> I love this question. I always say um, Nas and Lauryn Hill, If I Rule the World. Um, that's one of my favorite songs. It's been one of my favorite songs. I actually remember, I gotta tell you a story behind it. Um, the first time I went to Cali, when I first kind of discovered the idea behind like the black market company, which, which is now Forefront. And I was at the top of Vernon Canyon and they was playing that song and I just felt so empowered. So that is definitely like my life song. Um, yeah, it, it gives me a lot of inspiration. That's hard. And look, final question. What's an amazing thing that you did that no one was around to see? Hmm. Like no one at all or like just the masses? Both. Um, I would say one thing that like has always stuck to me since this happened. And I was like in middle school, leaving a track game or track meet, going to church for like a prayer night. And I saw a homeless guy who was like in crutches and um, I literally only gave him $3. That's all I had, but I felt very called to give him some money, what I could. And that moment really changed my life, um, mainly because I saw a man like really break down over $3 and I know it really touched him. And I could not stop thinking about that man like for like at least a year or two. Sometimes I still think about him. Um, but that really kind of changed my perspective on life, just like showing gratitude, but also knowing that, you know, when I get in a position, even now, I'm just doing what I can to support people as much as possible, but especially underserved people, underprivileged people. So that's something that I actually want to incorporate within Forefront as well in the future, maybe like a nonprofit to support underserved and underrepresented communities. Um, I don't really know if that's the answer he was looking for, but that's like the first thing that came in my head. And nah, I mean, look, that was incredible, man. Jordan, <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time out, man, to sit with us and just, you know, share your mindset with, you know, the rest of the world. So, I mean, I just really appreciate it. I feel like it's a legendary episode, man, and the people will love it, you know? Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share my vision and would love to see you all come onto the platform one day and be able to support Black-owned businesses, maybe have you as an influencer and making some, you know, making some bread. So that's dope. That's a fact, man. Thank you. Yeah.